Welcome back Year 12 Global Politics. Today we will be looking at power and specifically we will be looking at military power. I will explain what the definition of military power is as well as talk about some examples of it. Now in terms of the key skills for power, what you need to be able to do is talk about how effective it has been. So how has it been effective in achieving a national interest a specific state's national interest, as well as how it hasn't been effective, because that's really what an evaluation is. So how has military power been effective in achieving national security? And then how has it maybe not been very effective in achieving national security or economic prosperity and any of those kind of national interests? Something that is different with this dot point is that we also need to be saying the relative importance of power and you know the relative importance of military power so what it may be what may be helpful for you to do is actually look at your country that you're studying whether it's you know Australia China or the US and think about what type of power is the most important type of power to your country and why and then which type of power is the least important type of power um, your country, and the reason why I think they say relative importance is because different countries will value different types of power. There may not be a right or wrong answer here. You know, military and economic power may be both important to your country, or one may be more important than the other. So I don't think there's really going to be a wrong answer here. However, you probably wouldn't say that cultural power is probably the most important type of power to a country. So that's probably the skills here. You need to be able to evaluate if it's been effective or ineffective in achieving a national interest, and then also the relative importance of that type of power. So let's get into military power. So military power is the use of the state's military to exert influence over the actions of other global actors. I think a really important part of power is influence. You need to be able to show when to, when showing an understanding of military power or any kind of power, you need to show that it has actually influenced a state. You know that it they've they're trying to to persuade them. They're trying to change something about them. And with military power, the way that they try to influence people is with the use or threat of violence. So to get into some examples of this. Um, China has, there's lots of different examples you could talk about here. Some classes may have studied the South China Sea, and I think that's a great example because with military power and the South China Sea, that can also be used for military as a foreign policy instrument because it is external to the state. The, another example you could talk about though is Taiwan and the military exercises that China has, well, I guess, commit like um, the military exercises that have taken place to try and influence Taiwan. So what China is essentially doing is trying to influence Taiwan to not break away from them or to convince them to reunify. So by threatening them with military exercises or you know having you know military incursions over the Taiwan airspace, what they are trying to do is contain Taiwan's independence and to prevent them from you know, seeking independence. So that's what they're trying to influence. And the national interest that they're trying to achieve is national security because they need to protect their sovereignty. China needs to prevent them from breaking away. So by carrying out these military exercises, they are through threats and through force, so it's hard military power, they are trying to stop them and trying to contain their independence. So that's probably an example you could use of them trying to influence. In terms of whether or not they have been successful, well, Taiwan at this point hasn't completely sought independence. You know, they aren't recognised in the UN as a separate state. However, Taiwan still does have a lot of very different things to China. You know, they aren't part of the People's Republic of China. So it has not really been 
very probably effective in completely creating, you know, completely preventing independence, but it also hasn't, you know, also been completely successful. So, you know, it's, it's probably a bit of both here. Now, what I've also done here is tried to give an example of soft military power, because whilst military power can be, you know, hard power, you know, it can be coercive, it can be threatening, it can also be used in a persuasive way. So what China has done here with the UN peacekeeping is they have committed the most amount of personnel to the UN peacekeeping operations. 8,000 people are part of the, 8,000 8, Chinese citizens are part of the UN peacekeeping operations. That's more than any other country in the United Nations. So they may here be trying to influence others to see China as a good international citizen, thereby helping them achieve international standing, you know, help improve their international standing. So that's an interesting example that you could use to talk about peace, you know, to talk about soft military power and, you know, how they're trying to influence others to see them more positively. Another example which I haven't included here is the South China Sea. There's a lot happening in the space all the time with China in the South China Sea. Um, you know, they've obviously militarised that space. They have met um, maritime militia, which is like essentially um, a number of fishermen in the South China Sea are armed and are helping help well, try and help China, you know, continue to assert their territorial integrity and assert sovereignty over this space. So that's something you could also talk about. And in terms of how or how or why this type of power is important, I think China's continued increase and investment in the military budget is showing that they do think it is important. So between 2020 and 2021, the budget increased by 6.1% to 208 billion US dollars. So they obviously do think that it is important. They are trying to increase their budget. Therefore, I do think it is quite an important type of power and it has been somewhat effective in achieving national interests, in particular trying to assert China's sovereignty and territorial integrity in these areas. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand what military power is, the how it's important, and probably some examples of how it's tried to achieve a national interest. So I hope that was helpful, and I will see you again for my next video. Bye!